Welcome to RenewEnergy.com, your renewable energy and sustainability platform. At RenewEnergy.com, we believe in the power of clean, sustainable energy to transform the way we live and work. That's why we offer a range of solutions for businesses and homeowners looking to switch to renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, and water. As the world faces the escalating crisis of climate change, there is a growing impetus for businesses to understand and manage their environmental impact. Key to this understanding is the accurate quantification of greenhouse gas (GHG) emissions. The Greenhouse Gas Protocol (GHG Protocol) provides an international standard for such measurements, offering businesses a clear, comprehensive, and consistent method of quantifying their emissions. Within the GHG Protocol, Scope 1 emissions represent an organization's direct GHG emissions. These emissions come from sources owned or controlled by the organization, including fuel combustion, company vehicles, and emissions from chemical reactions. This video delves into the intricate process of calculating Scope 1 emissions using the GHG protocol. Step 1. Identify emission sources. The first step in Scope 1 emissions calculations is the identification of emission sources. Every business operation that results in direct GHG emissions needs to be cataloged. This can include a variety of emission sources such as stationary combustion sources, for example, boilers, furnaces, mobile combustion sources, company-owned vehicles, process emissions, chemical reactions during the production process, and fugitive emissions, unintentional leaks of GHG. This identification step requires a thorough understanding of your business operations and may require a multidisciplinary approach, encompassing teams from facilities management, logistics, production, and environmental compliance. Step 2. Gather activity data. Once the emission sources have been identified, the next step is to gather relevant activity data. This data pertains to the quantity of activities resulting in emissions. It's crucial to use the most accurate and up-to-date data to ensure the integrity of the emission calculation. For stationary combustion, this could mean recording the quantity of each type of fuel used. Mobile combustion would necessitate data such as the type of fuel used by company vehicles, distances traveled, and fuel efficiency. Process emissions calculations require the quantity of raw materials used or products manufactured. Fugitive emissions, being harder to measure, may be calculated based on equipment counts, operational hours, or other relevant proxies. Step 3. Determine emission factors. Emission factors form a critical component of the GHG calculation. These factors are coefficients that convert activity data into GHG emissions data, providing a value for the average emission rate of a given GHG for a particular source, relative to units of activity. Various organizations publish emission factors, including the International Panel on Climate Change IPCC, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and the GHG protocol itself. These factors are periodically updated to incorporate the latest scientific findings and should be sourced from the most recent publications. Step 4. Apply emission factors to activity data. The actual calculation of emissions occurs in this step. The activity data is multiplied by the respective emission factors to estimate the emissions from each source. Calculations should be done separately for each GHG, as each gas has different characteristics and impacts. The result is a set of GHG emissions data for your organization, broken down by source and type of gas. Step 5. Convert to CO2 equivalents. While GHG emissions are calculated separately for each gas, they must eventually be reported in a common unit to make them comparable. This is done by converting them into carbon dioxide equivalents, CO2e, using their global warming potential, GWP. The GWP is a measure of how much heat a GHG traps in the atmosphere relative to CO2. The IPCC provides GWP values for different GHGs. When converting to CO2e, organizations typically use the 100-year GWP values from the IPCC's latest assessment report. Step 6. Report and Verify. After calculating the Scope 1 emissions, the next step is to report the data. Reporting should be clear and transparent, detailing the total emissions, the methodologies used, the sources of emission factors, and any other relevant information. In some cases, third-party verification might be needed to enhance the credibility of the reported data. Third-party auditors assess whether the calculations have been performed correctly according to the GHG protocol and whether the reported information is complete and accurate. In conclusion, calculating Scope 1 emissions can be a complex process involving multiple steps and requiring meticulous data collection. However, it's an essential component of a comprehensive climate strategy. 
By accurately measuring and reporting GHG emissions, organizations can identify significant emission sources, track performance over time, and target emission reductions effectively. As the adage goes, what gets measured gets managed, and in the face of climate change, there's never been a more crucial time to manage our carbon footprints. Thank you for choosing RenewEnergy.com as your go-to source for all things renewable energy and sustainability. With our YouTube channel, we explore the latest developments and innovations in the field, including hydrogen fuel cells and the use of AI and machine learning to optimize energy consumption. If you're ready to take the next step towards a cleaner, more sustainable future, visit us at RenewEnergy.com and discover the many ways we can help you transition to renewable energy. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Stay up to date on all the latest news and insights by subscribing today.